What's going on YouTube? Your boy Juan Valdez back with a brand new video and I know it's been a little while since I last uploaded so I truly apologize about that. Uh, I am going to be a lot more consistent from here on out with the content the videos that I share with you guys. Now there's been a lot that's changed since we last spoke but I wanted to cover a topic in this video. Can you still make money in e-commerce? Now obviously with the marketplace changing, things getting a lot more difficult as far as like advertising wise, you know advertising costs going up, you know product research getting a lot more difficult, all these different changes that have been happening in the space. Is it still possible to make money with e-commerce? And I wanted to share with you guys not only insights from myself but also some things I've learned from other e-commerce entrepreneurs that I've been able to connect with during the last little while here. So uh, just some quick updates. I honestly just been working on a few different projects and just been putting in the work and that's why I've been as consistent with the videos but I will start recording a lot more frequently. I'm aiming for at least a video a week and I wanna amp that up a lot more but that's my first goal. So I'm gonna be working on that. Uh, I've also been in the middle of moving. I just moved into a new place here. Uh, I, there's not too much here yet because I haven't really spent the time to get the couch. All I really needed to have was like the battle station. So I have the desk set up here. Boom, it's like a stand-up desk. I got Pluto right over there, but I got this new monitor with like a new monitor set up. I got this new desk. I got the new battle station. That's pretty much the only thing I have set up so far. That's pretty, pretty much the only thing I actually care about anyway. I don't really need a couch. I don't really watch TV, so. But I do got the board, which has the Ecom Accelerator 2.0 on it, which is a project I've been working on. Between me and my business partner, we've been doing a complete revamp to our e-commerce accelerator training. And I know you guys, some of you guys may have already heard about our you know, previous accelerator that we had for our e-commerce training, but we're doing complete new updates and I'm actually getting ready to start recording some of the new videos within the end of the day today or within the next couple of days. And it's gonna be things that we've learned up to date and also some things we've learned from other e-commerce entrepreneurs. But for anyone that's planning on coming into this space and just trying to make money specifically on drop shipping, I don't think it's an opportunity where you're gonna be able to come in and just make money if you're just planning on doing that. Like, yeah, you. Like you'll be able to make some quick profits, but as far as long-term, which is, I should have probably rephrased that, long-term revenue, it's gonna be a lot harder because the dropship model, that space is getting a lot more competitive, right? Customers are starting to realize like, hey, if I buy this product on Facebook or Instagram, it's taking me this long to get it. But if I order from Amazon or anywhere else, I can get it a lot sooner now. That's obviously a problem. So you have to be able to adjust and adapt to the marketplace. So that's one of the things that, if you're just planning on coming into e-commerce to get into dropshipping and just make revenue that way, it's gonna be a little bit tricky, right? But now, if you're planning on taking a different route, which is coming into e-commerce, using the dropship route just to really learn about marketing and how to really successfully sell other people's products, to then use those skill sets to sell your own products and create more of a brand, well, that's an approach where you can actually expect to actually you know, get results and long-term and consistent results, right? Because that's also the key thing. People can come into the space make some quick revenue, but if it doesn't keep consisting, if it doesn't keep happening month in and month out, well, what's the point, you know? And between me and my business partner, we've actually been blessed enough to actually have these interviews with, you know, two big e-commerce entrepreneurs, one being Mark Brazil, which is the founder of Iconic. Some of the motivational posters you guys probably see, I have a few of them up here, you can't really see them right now, but posting them before, some of you guys may have seen them. So he was one, and we also got to interview Dan Fleischman, who is the youngest person to ever take a company public. Now, honestly, super blessed to be able to interview both of those guys. Uh, actually, Samir, my business partner, uh, actually is the one that did the podcast with Mark Brazil, but you guys are probably may have already seen it on his channel. And the one with Dan Fleischman, uh, we were both in that and we got to speak to him and it was honestly incredible. Both of them shared interesting perspectives as far as how they've grown their companies. Uh, Mark Brazil, for those of you guys that don't know about Iconic, they've blown up within the last year or two utilizing influencers and Facebook advertising, right? They both mentioned something super interesting, right? As far as where all their success stems from, they all mentioned something that I think you guys will get a ton of value from. It's actually something that I am gonna start trying to do a lot more of when it comes to actually coming into e-commerce and the approach I'm gonna have. First example was with Dan Fleischman. So Dan Fleischman, the approach that he took, he actually got into the e-commerce space a while ago. He's been in the space for six plus years around that, that time. He's a lot more behind the scenes to some of the brands he actually works with, but he's like really known in the space. And so he, really blew up a brand when the hoverboards first came out. That was one of the products that he really like first blew up with the strategy specifically that he used for that same product, but also for other products. And 
the approach is interesting, right? Because a lot of people don't come into the marketplace with the mindset and with this approach actually. And three years ago, the hoverboards were obviously super common. Some of you guys may have already heard about the hoverboards and you may have been around for that era. In that time frame, obviously it was a very common product and a lot of people started to hop on the train where they would start promoting and selling that same product. And the approach that Dan decided to take, and it's funny because it's similar to the approach that Mark mentioned that they decided to take with Iconic is, they decided to come into the marketplace, realize that obviously everybody was trying to sell these hoverboards, but he wanted to see how he could come into the marketplace and create a unique approach or a unique selling proposition that could help him get a piece of the pie, uh, obviously a piece of the sales that would be made in that space, but also really get really known in that market and create a brand in this space. This concept of coming in and looking for a unique selling proposition or a unique selling mechanism isn't as common. It isn't something that a lot of people teach or kind of go over, but it is something that really does help when it comes to the e-commerce space and really standing out in the marketplace because what he decided to do is say, hey, okay, well, all these guys are selling all their hoverboards for $400 and they're having people wait two or three weeks for shipping. Cool, I already know that these products are selling really well, so why don't I you know, take a little bit of a risk, order a few hundred of them up front and have them in a warehouse, have them in the fulfillment center and charge half for what other people are charging and get the product out to the customer a lot faster. And that's the unique approach he took to actually selling the hoverboards when they were really blowing up and everybody was selling them. And because of that, he was quickly able to blow up this brand that just started literally around the same era when everybody else was trying to sell these hoverboards. And it's honestly incredible to hear because a lot of people don't think about the value of being able to, you know, because obviously everybody knows that they can come in and undercut people on pricing. That's obviously very normal. But one of the things that people don't consider is like, how can you also over deliver to your customer and benefit from that as well? Because obviously people don't wanna take the risk of ordering products up front to just get the product out to their customers a lot faster, right? That's obviously pretty known in the space. If you can get your products to your customer a lot faster than everybody else can, like yeah, maybe you lose out on some of the profits up front, but that means that you can also remarket to those same customers a lot sooner because everybody else, they're waiting for their product two to three weeks from the people that they're buying from. If you can get your products to the, your customer within like in a week or so, that means that they're gonna have their product. So one, the customer's happy. And two, you can already resell them another product or service that you have available if you do a week after. So it's a win-win for everybody. Now, obviously it does take a little bit more work up front, but it can lead to massive reward, right? Because one, you can get repeat customers, which is the ultimate goal. And you can get these customers a lot faster. And two, you can build a strong customer base because customers are more willing to do business with you if you're providing great service and if they're able to get their product a lot faster with you. That's why we all love Amazon, right? That approach that he has, he says he has done over and over and over again with different products and different niches and it has worked like a charm. And so that's one of the things that I wanted to share with you guys in this video that you can do is like, if you're planning on coming into this space, rather than having the same approach as everybody else, if you actually wanna make money in e-commerce, try to come in and look for products that are already selling well, but also see how you can find a unique approach to those products, right? If you have capital, order those products up front. It doesn't have to be a very big order. You can order a few, maybe 50 to 100 units of that product, get it to a fulfillment center, and then from there you can have that fulfillment center ship out the orders to your customers and have your customers get faster shipping times. That could be a unique approach, right? Another thing could be the example that Mark Brazil shared with us. Now this is obviously a, a completely different ball game, but it's the same concept of finding a unique selling mechanism or a unique selling proposition. So he was telling us a story about how he was selling these really expensive paintings. Like we're talking about high ticket paintings. He was selling to people that could afford those actual paintings, but he also was getting a lot of inquiries for people that wanted similar paintings with for similar concepts of you know, the original paintings he was selling, the people that were inquiring about these paintings didn't really have the budgets to buy, you know, these $100,000 painted paintings, but they were still interested in buying paintings. So he was like, okay, cool. Well, why not approach the market, the same market with the same kinds of paintings, similar options and similar paintings and reduce the pricing that we're selling them for. So rather than selling these for $100,000, even though they're great designs, let's sell them for a few hundred dollars. And because he found that unique selling mechanism, he was able to come into the marketplace and quickly blow up this e-commerce behemoth that he has grown, this e-commerce canvas company, and 
that's how he was able to do it is by really coming into the market and seeing, okay, cool. Well, people already want canvases, but not everybody can afford to pay hundred thousand dollars. And people want something that's a little bit better than just these cheap ones that cost just a 10, 20 bucks. Well, I can meet them right in the middle. And that's the unique approach that he had to uh, the marketplace. And so both of those guys shared great insight with me. For those of you guys that don't know these guys, you should check them out. They're absolute beasts when it comes to the e-commerce space. And they've obviously successfully grown these brands into what they are now. So you guys can check them out. The approach that you guys should have coming into e-commerce is like, yeah, make money drop shipping if you can, for sure, selling other people's products. But one, if you wanna do a better job of making even more revenue in the drop shipping with the drop shipping model, see if you can find a unique selling proposition or a unique selling mechanism for the products you're planning on selling. And then two, you leverage the skill sets that you learn from selling other people's products with a unique selling mechanism and use that to sell your own products and services with your own brand. Because long-term, brands are the ones that are gonna win this long-term game. That's actually what we're focusing on right now. Me and my business partners have products that we're getting ready to test out and really build brands around. And so we're taking the extra mile, we're ordering samples, we're getting packages made, we're getting our logos made, we're going the extra step. It does take a little bit more work, but in the long term ends up yielding the most reward. So I know that was a lot for this video. I don't wanna make this video too long. I just wanted to take a second to kind of share these things with you guys. I hope you guys picked up a thing or two. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like on this video. If you have any questions about anything that I went over, drop them in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you guys. And if you haven't already joined the family, smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.